6 p.m. in Jindom in the Momo Division of the Northwest Region of Cameroon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for joining me on this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. The government of Cameroon plans going ahead with the importation of the AstraZeneca vaccine despite several worries on the side effects of this vaccine. The government says this vaccine will better fight against or better mitigate the fight against COVID-19. Details in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for joining me on this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast. For presentation, I am Immaculate Fogway. Despite the arrival of 200 doses of the Sinopharm vaccine, which was imported by the government of Cameroon, the authorities insist that they will push through with the importation of the AstraZeneca vaccine. The information was revealed by the Minister of Communication, Rene Manuel Sadi, and that of Public Health, Dr. Manauda Malachi. More with our reporter, for me, I'm strong Sander. Totally freeing the government of Cameroon from the current heated public debate on the management of COVID-19 funds. The Minister of Communication and his colleague of Public Health dedicated the Yaounde press conference on the merits of being vaccinated against COVID-19. René Emmanuel Sadi. Cameroon's communication boss says vaccination remains the most effective response to save humanity from the coronavirus after the arrival of the consignment of the Chinese-made Sinopharm's vaccine to Cameroon. The spokesperson of the government says Cameroon has ordered the importation of some 391,000 doses of the controversial British AstraZeneca vaccine. He says the vaccines are expected in Cameroon beginning the 18th of April 2021. According to the Minister of Public Health, Dr. Manahuda Malashi, Cameroon will also receive a huge consignment of the U.S.-made Johnson's & Johnson's vaccines. He further indicated that the Medical Council in Cameroon has already acquired a huge consignment of the Russian-made Sputnik COVID-19 vaccines. The Minister of Public Health further revealed that the government will receive vaccines for 20% of its risk population and went further to outline the vaccination process put in place by the government. He said the vaccination plan will have as priority people who are highly exposed to COVID-19. The curiosity is however on how the common Cameroonian man will respond to the COVID-19 vaccination proper. For me, Armstrong Sander reporting, and we now talk the Anglophone crisis. Inaccessibility has been identified as the obstacle hindering the Bonga Council from realizing 100% execution rate of its envisaged 2020 projects during the Council's administrative management and store session that was held in Bonji Village, Southwest Region, under tight security. The municipal councillors said they had executed 88.8% of the 2020 projects. More with our reporter, Innocent Aze. Insecurity pushes Mbonge municipal councillors to hold their administrative management and stores account session in a classroom in Mabonji village, away from their subdivisional headquarters. Apart from municipal councillors, defence and security elements were in attendance. No doubt for security reasons. However, despite the social political turbulence that greatly affected Mbonge subdivision, the Mbonge Council still bears a good report card as execution rate of its 2020 projects stands at 88.82%. If at least 12% of the envisaged 2020 projects were not realized, inaccessibility is advanced. The projects were not realized in Mbonge subdivision is insecurity challenges. Some areas, the bridges linking the villages were, were destroyed by the secessionists and up to now we are still struggling to see how to construct. Machines cannot reach those places because of the dilapidated nature of roads. Materials which, we, which are supposed to go there for 
for the constructions of those those um, uh, uh, constructions were not uh, uh, cannot be able to be transported because of the dilapidated nature of road and the disturbance of the boys on the roads. Mbonge Council, being one of the largest council area in the southwest region, according to the mayor, also does not owe workers salary or indebted to its contractors. Our top priority. The Mbonge Council's actual budget of over 900 million francs CFA witnessed a surplus of over 300 million francs CFA after income and expenditure examination, an amount brought forward for the 2021 fiscal year. The budget stood at 1,306,574,000 512 francs, amount authorized for collection by the authorizing officer, 996 million, 190. Mbonge municipal councillors had also carried out series of sensitization campaigns to curb spreads of the coronavirus in the subdivision. By the committee put in place to fight against COVID-19 in Bonge municipality. We now take you straight away to the Northwest region where the administrative account of the Bamenda Three Council has been adopted at a tune of about 700 million francs CFA. This was revealed on Friday, April 16, during the Council's administrative management and stores account session. Despite several challenges encountered due to the socio-political upheaval, the Babenda Three Council succeeded to realize a good number of projects during the 2020 fiscal year, some of which include maintenance of roads, provision of electricity, supply of portable water, construction of bridges, and provision of water, many other projects, all standing at about 80% execution rate. Right now, take a listen to the Bamenda Three Council Mayor, Fongo Kletus Tangwi, and his accept. Us, uh, the administrative account of uh, Bamenda Three Council have just been adopted uh, to the tune of over uh, a little bit above 700 million francs. And uh, we are thankful to all the stakeholders who work so hard to make this happen. We have uh, realized a good number of projects uh, ranging from uh, portable water supply, maintenance of roads, and uh, extension of electricity to most of our neighborhoods. Uh, I think uh, our action plan this time was uh, realized over 80% of the action plan was realized. So the physical year 2020, we succeeded in tarring the road from uh, PNEU to farmer's house. We actually maintain some uh, earth roads uh, across the municipality and uh, we equally constructed some bridges, some uh, culverts and uh, uh, that uh, links uh, the other aspect, the, the, the some quarters across the municipality. Let our population have uh, uh, excess water supply. And uh, to this effect, uh, we are working day and night to make that happen. That is the reason why uh, our partners in Germany have shipped a container of uh, equipment uh, that will enable us to double the production capacity of uh, our water project. And uh, when this is done, we'll be able to extend the water to other neighborhoods. That are we leave the town of Bamenda to the west region where the population over there criticized the recent hike in the price of bread. Many of them think the coronavirus pandemic has already affected the economy enough and such a thing should not occur. But rather, owners of bakeries believe the recent hike is due to the increase in the price of items used for the production of bread. Details in this report. The population of Bafusam in the West region expressed their wrath over the hike and the prices of bread for several days. Owners of bakeries attribute the rise to the recent increase of the price of wheat flour. Major ingredients used for the production of bread, especially wheat flour, are now very expensive. The government has not done anything to address the situation. We have solicited the intervention of the government because the sector is crippling. 
the entire chain, starting from the producer to the retailer and finally the consumer, have been affected in one way or the other. We now sell bread for 125 francs. Before, we used to sell it for 100 francs. Our suppliers have increased the price of bread. Before, I used to buy bread for 75 francs and later sell it for 100 francs. But now the suppliers give it to us for 115 francs and we sell it for 125 francs. With a battered economy like that of Cameroon, the increase has forced civil households to depend on other commodities while anxiously waiting for the price of bread to decrease. Before, I used to buy 15 bread daily, but now I buy just 10 because most of my clients are not happy with the increase in price. Since morning, I have been sleeping. There are no customers. Before, people used to stand on the line just to buy bread, but that's not the case now. While at the Divisional Delegation of Commerce in the Main Fee Division, the head of department refused altering a word concerning the subject a crisis meeting is expected to be held in the days ahead. And to something else, the new Consulate General of Equatorial Guinea to Cameroon, Andrea Milha Dong, has, was received today in Bonanjo by the Governor of the Lithuania region, Samuel Judeneva Dibua. During the meeting, the Consulate General promised to rectify the problem of visa between Cameroon, for between persons living to Cameroon and those coming into Equatorial Guinea. More this report compiled by Charles Ikome. Ladies and gentlemen, a brief overview of diplomatic and consular relations between Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea. Samuel Zuduni Ivaha Dibua, Governor of the Littoral Region, welcomes Andres Mikas Ndong, new General Consulate of Equatorial Guinea to Cameroon. The General Consulate reminded Cameroonians of the cultural ties which bonds both nations. This was during a ceremony in his honor at the governor's office in Bonanjo, Douala 1 subdivision. The very first words I will utter is that Equatorial Guinea and Cameroon are brotherly nations from same fathers and mothers. We are not allies based on economic and sociocultural interests, so I will enforce the bilateral relationships between both nations. Andres Mikus Ndong also tells Cameroonians who have had problems with issuing a visa to Equatorial Guinea that the problem will no longer exist. Moreover, he reminds the Cameroonian population of the cross-border convention signed between both nations. Like the governor earlier said, we have signed cross-border military conventions, which simply means if an enemy comes to attack Cameroon, the Equatorial Guinean military will be directly involved by supporting Cameroon and vice versa. Moreover, there will be no problem since I will be here to oversee the smooth operation vis-a-vis -vis the issuing of visas since we are in the SEMAC zone. And Equatorial Guinea may share some very deep cultural ties, but according to reports, the citizens of both nations usually get into feuds and conflicts. Hopefully, the new General Consulate will be able to attenuate the effect of these conflicts for a harmonious collaboration between both nations. On to something else, private companies in Cameroon have been badly hit by the coronavirus pandemic. Small and medium-sized enterprises have been become financially fragile, causing many of them to shut down. The situation has even become more complicated as the Bank of Central African State, BIAC, has blocked the transfer of funds, which is, however, essential for, the financial, for financial transactions. Owners of private companies during a meeting held in Douala expressed frustration towards the decision taken by BIAC. According to Celestine Tawamba, 
president of the Cabinet Employers Grouping, such a decision will result to the closure of civil order enterprises. The employers equally raised concerns about government's low support measures to boost companies that are already at the verge of shutting down. Alphonse Nafak, president of the Association of Credit Institutions of Cameroon, during the meeting assured employers that the measures are being put in place in order to spare enterprises from any possible cessation. And we now take you to the Republic of Chad, where Chad's Independent National Electoral Commission has started publishing results of Sunday's presidential election. It published partial results from three regions yesterday. Globally, incumbent Idris Deby Idno is leading with a wide gap from other candidates. In almost all the subdivisions and divisions of Jamina and two other provinces, Idris Deby Idno has between 80 to 99 percent of votes. The president of the Independent National Electoral Commission said the results will be made public progressively. That's it for this first part of the news. Up next is Talking Point. On today's edition of Talking Point, I will be receiving Professor Henry Formudam. He is a pharmaceutical <coughs> care and public health expert with many years of experience working in civil African countries in the academia, that is in academic and public health programs. He served as a member of the National Clinical Trials Committee at the Medicine Regulatory Authority in South Africa for over six years. Good evening, Doctor, and thanks for joining me on this edition of the 6 p.m. Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. Good evening, Immaculate, and thank you for having me today. Today we are going to be looking at vaccines. Recently, Cameron imported 200,000 doses of the Sinopharm vaccine. Now, Cameron plans importing other doses, that is that of the AstraZeneca, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and the Sputnik vaccine. What can you talk, what can you say as far as AstraZeneca vaccine is concerned? We know we had some issues as far as AstraZeneca vaccine is concerned with regards to blood clots, which was reported by other Western countries. Do you think it is a good idea for Cameroon to import such a vaccine? Well, thank you very much, um, Immaculate. That's a very good question, and I think it's a question that is on everybody's mind, uh, rightly so. Uh, but I just want to talk in general about vaccine safety because we have a lot of them and the way you measure safety and adverse drug reactions. Um, you could see that at some point uh, they put a stop to AstraZeneca uh, in terms of wanting to, to monitor and investigate, which is also what Johnson has, Johnson has done to its vaccine right now. Because when you have adverse drug reactions, and you will have it with all the vaccines, and all medicines for that matter. The most important part of it is to make sure that there's a correlation. There's a, what you call causality. Um, that what, is it the medicine that is actually causing uh, the, uh, the adverse uh, reaction? Uh, blood clots has been what has been re reported. It's, it's abbreviated C, uh, CVST, and it's what is being reported. Now, the, the number of patients that have come down with that rare blood clot it's a lot less uh, compared to the general population. So if a female is on birth control pills, for example, or smoking, your risk of having blood clot is even much higher than taking the vaccine. However, that has to be investigated. And in the U.S., we always quote the U.S. because they keep good data uh, compared to many countries. And I hope Cameroon is going to start keeping good data when they start vaccinating people. Um, it's uh, six people out of about 6.8 million people came down with that blood clot. And so it's being investigated. Was it because, um, and the, 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 the ladies are about 18 to 48 years old. Um, all of them have low platelets. Platelets is that blood that would cause a clot when you have a wound. And so all of them have it. Is it because of the low platelet? Is it because are they smokers? Um, do they have any other underlying condition? That's what they're investigating. And South Africa being one of the countries that was using J&J, &J, they have also suspended it, waiting for this investigation. That's the right thing to do. There shouldn't be too much alarm about it. It's a precautionary measure. 
which is quite good. Okay, Cameroon plans importing four different types of vaccines. Would this va vaccines be administered, all these vaccines be administered at the same time, or each person would just be administered one of these vaccines? And how do these vaccines work differently? Well, yes, what, what the, the slogan that is used all over the world, WHO promotes it in the US, is that the best vaccine is the first one that you can lay your hands on. Um, Cameroon is going to be ordering four. Um, uh, AstraZeneca is one of them. Uh, Johnson & Johnson is going to be one of them. Sputnik is one. And uh, the Sinopharm vaccine. I, I am of the impression that Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca, we have uh, the most experience with it, is being reviewed and approved by, uh, 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 by reputable uh, regulatory authorities. Uh, it's been approved by WHO. Is approved by the U.S., is approved by the EU. So that should give some level of comfort. But because they are new products, you need to be able to investigate. Um, Sinopharm is the one that is still pending review by the WHO or by the, by the European Union. So to answer your question, um, the general notion is that um, the first vaccine that you can get, and you'll have to be able to, if you have all of them at once, you should be able to use them simultaneously. That's what other countries are doing. When Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine were out, they were using them uh, in, in, in the U.S. parallel, depending on uh, which uh, facility has which vaccine. So in the case of Cameroon, uh, you would have to do that, although I would have been most comfortable for them using the ones that have been approved by WHO or by the European Union or by the U.S. The reason why we call this organization is because we know their reputation. We know that uh, they have the capacity to do reviews because it's not just a claim. When somebody says my vaccine works 80% of the time, what you need to do is ask for the data. Okay. You need to review it. The U.S. has that capacity. WHO is not a regulatory authority, but it brings all the experts together and they're able to review. So it gives us some comfort when you have all of those regulatory organizations approve a vaccine. Now, it's not comfort for you to go to bed. It's comfort just to say we can get it into the country, but we have to monitor it. And we don't depend only on the U.S. or Europe for safety monitoring. We have to do our own local monitoring in each and every country, Cameroon in particular. Talking about the administration of this vaccine, with the case of Cameroon, a lot of people have been vaccinated without even being tested if they are COVID-19 positive or negative. Don't you think without having such results, it can alter or it may still not be effective as far as vaccination is concerned? Well, no, I, I, I have a, um, uh, that's not the case. Um, I, I have a, a, a bigger problem than that. The problem that I have was that, uh, and I wish every African country, including Cameroon, should do that, uh, is to make sure that you know the variant that is predominant in your country. So I would have liked to see something like in all the regions, blood samples were pulled out and so that a sequencing should be done so we know the variant that we're, de we're dealing with. Now, um, having been previously uh, infected uh, by COVID-19 is not a contraindication. Um, the question has come up many times. People who have had the, uh, the disease before are still um, are eligible to, um, to take the vaccine. If you have an active uh, uh, disease, you're in the hospital or you're very sick, those are the ones that we don't want to give the vaccine. Those are the ones that you could say is contraindicated. But if you're very healthy, you're going around, it's okay, you can take it. It's not a precondition that you'll be tested before you give, before you give the vaccine. What I'm trying to say is, in case someone is already infected with COVID-19, they can still take the vaccine or what? I didn't get that so clearly. Yes. If you are, if, if you can still, if, if, you can, if you don't have the disease, there are two things. You can be infected and you don't have the disease. That's what we're saying. If you have an active disease, which means you're either in the hospital or you're very sick, that person does not qualify to get the vaccine. But because it's not a precondition to test somebody before you give them the vaccine. Like in the U.S., people stand on the line, you're in your car. You just get the vaccine. They don't test you before they give you the vaccine. But if you are in the hospital, and because they will ask you a number of questions, did you just have it? Are you just? Uh, did you just have the disease? 
they will not give it to you immediately that you've just had it, like a couple of days ago that you just had it. And if you're not showing any active sign, they will give it to you. And women, are they allowed to be administered a vaccine? It's who? What about pregnant women? Can they receive such a vaccine? Or can yeah. it have an effect on their so, baby, their unborn baby, sorry? Sure. Sure. So, so that's also a very good question. And when um, drugs are being studied, clinical trials, most often you would have to exclude pregnant women. So um, pregnant women were excluded from all the clinical trials. However, when the drug became available, we, we have data that pregnant women have taken it and there hasn't been any problem to date, but it wasn't in the clinical trial. So at this moment, you would not find one that says that in a package insert or the guidelines to say, give it, we have the data on it. There is no data on it, except people who took it inadvertently and they've analyzed them. So far, there's no problem. But pregnant women and medication, you require that you follow the, the baby for about 12 months in order to be sure. So far, the one that they've had, it seems to be safe. But that is not a clear indication. So at this moment, most people are very cautious to say it shouldn't be given at this time. However, a couple of protocols in different countries, they give it based on this data that I'm telling you, which is not clinical trial data. It's just people who um, got pregnant, some of them didn't know, and they got the vaccine, so they're monitoring them. Some of them have had the babies. The babies are doing OK. So some people think it should be okay. But the way the drug company does it, in order to say it is okay, 100% is that they should have been part of the clinical trial, and there are some clinical trials that are going on now looking at that, and that information should be coming out soon authoritatively. Cameroon, like many other countries, are experiencing a second wave of the coronavirus. Why is the second wave described as more deadly than the, or the first wave? What makes it more deadly it's, when we know well, it's the same virus? Historically, violence. it's always been that way. There are two points that makes the second wave always deadly. The first point is that when it comes out the very first time, nobody knows about it. So people are very scared. Uh, the first wave, people are very scared. There are all kinds of warnings. And then when people see that, well, not everybody is dying, not too many people are dying, or not people around me are dying, or I don't know anybody that has died. So they become very complacent. That's the first reason. The second, they become very complacent and the second wave comes and a lot more people are infected. The second reason is that because we're dealing with a virus most often, sometimes a bacteria, but in this case, it's a virus. The virus is always multiplying and it replicates into what you call variants. Like now, South Africa has its own variant. Uh, the UK has variant. The Brazil came with variant. They are now all over the world. So if you have that variant, we think and we know in South, the case of South Africa that AstraZeneca was not very effective against the South African variant. So people who had that variant at that time were most likely going to die because it was a more resistant variant. And the virus normally would try to produce more resistant variant because it is also trying to survive. So that's why the second wave is always more dangerous. Working with several HIV patients over there in South Africa, we know HIV has been existing for several years, but yet there is no vaccine. But now we said we just got the coronavirus and they are already talking about a vaccine. Don't you think it's normal for people to be scared about how effective such vaccines are? Yes. It's, 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 I mean, I've, we, we've, we've, we've been discussing that, but these are two different viruses. Um, uh, and, 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 and you can't do a head-on comparison. The HIV, uh, uh, the, H the HIV virus has been out for a long time, and there have been a lot of studies looking at it, um, and every time they come up very close to it, then a new variant comes up. And so that's how the virus protects itself. And there are a couple of other viruses that we've had, that we've had vaccines for it. It's not dependent on the length of time that you've had the, the infection for you to come up with a, with a treatment. It's actually dependent on the properties of that particular virus that you're dealing with. The properties of, of the COVID virus is a lot easier to develop a vaccine compared to HIV. 
So people are right to answer that question, to ask that question, but this is the answer, that you can't do that head-on comparison. The HIV virus is more tricky, is more resistant but than the COVID. The COVID came up with a couple of variants, and, and very, very, in the next several months, there's actually going to be vaccines that will be tailored towards that particular variant. If you do that for HIV, it will not even be a couple of weeks. Another variant has come up from that particular variant. So that makes HIV very difficult to be able to nail it down with one particular vaccine. What vaccine is currently being used in South Africa, and how effective is this vaccine over there? Can you ask that question again? What vaccine is currently being used in South Africa and how effective is that vaccine? Okay, they're using the Johnson & Johnson. Um, I spoke about um, South Africa had ordered one million doses of AstraZeneca. And just before the AstraZeneca doses got to South Africa, South Africa had conducted its own study because they had the variant. They were able to analyze the COVID that they had and they saw that they had a new variant. So they had started a study working together with a drug company, and they saw that AstraZeneca uh, va uh, vaccine was not going to be effective for the South African vaccine. So what they did now is they donated and, and gave out the AstraZeneca to other African countries. Now, they ordered J Johnson & Johnson because when Johnson & Johnson was being tested as a clinical trial, South Africa was one of the countries that they tested uh, Johnson & Johnson. So they know that Johnson & Johnson is effective. It's 57% efficacy in South Africa. And, and all the regulatory authorities have put the minimum efficacy to be 50%. This is 57%. And I know you hear a lot about Moderna and Pfizer, 90-something percent. But Johnson & Johnson is 57% for mild to moderate disease. However, it's about 85% effective for preventing a severe disease and hospitalization. So that's what South Africa is using, but they've put a, 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 a hold on it now just to investigate the blood clots that we spoke about. And how is the choice of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Well, how was it made in South Africa before they, they got that vaccine? Why the, that, why the Johnson & Johnson vaccine over other vaccines that exists? Right. So the, the, the first thing is that Johnson & Johnson was approved by WHO. Uh, it's approved by the reputable uh, 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 regulatory authority. Secondly, is what I just mentioned, that when the drug was being tested, clinical trial, South Africa was one of the countries. So it's good when a reputable organization wants to do a clinical trial in your country. You just have to make sure that they comply with the rules and regulation of conducting clinical trials globally and in your country. So South Africa was one of the countries where J and J, Johnson and Johnson did the test. And so when the first results came out, whatever results you were seeing, you saw that South Africa was one of them. So it was very easy for South Africa to make that choice to say we want Johnson and Johnson because AstraZeneca is not going to work for us. So if you have the same kind of variant that South Africa has, then AstraZeneca is not going to be very effective. So my request, uh, which I've been making, is that mo the African countries have to be able to test and make sure that they, they understand what kind of variant that they have in their country before they make a choice of the vaccine that they want to use. What advice do you have for Cameroonians who are so scared of getting themselves vaccinated? Well, my, my first advice is not even just to the Cameroonian. My first advice is to the government that is taking all of this, is that... Uh, in public health situations like this, communication is very important. And the communication has to be very honest and very transparent, which means you, you can't play with that kind of information. First, we're, we're living in different times. People can find out any information on the internet. Your job is to make sure that you're honest and very truthful with the people. Number two is that you have to, mon you have to make sure that there's monitoring in place and let everybody, the entire population, know what you're doing. None of the one of the vaccines is manufactured in Cameroon, so there's no need for you to hide anything or or try to massage the information. Make sure that you're transparent, you're honest, and when we talk about dissemination of information, it should not be only on TV or the radio. You need to get to the grassroots. You need to figure out how to get to the grassroots and to the people. 
If the government has done that, then I will request for the people to be able to listen to that kind of information. But people should also understand that anybody, anybody in the world can put anything on Google. So do not rely on that kind of information. You should rely on the experts. And so that's what the government has to do. Bring your experts, make sure that you are very transparent, very honest, and let the information get out to everybody. If you, do, if you have that kind of relationship, then there shouldn't be any problem. Are there any vaccine health concerns that we need to be aware of? Yes. So the, every time that you're given these vaccines, most of them, so to say, you're going to have a reaction. The place of injection is going to be hurting for a couple of days, but you're also going to have a generalized reaction. You're going to have weakness, you're going to have headache, but that is actually an adverse drug reaction, which they, they call it reactogenicity which means you are reacting to the vaccine. It is not bad. It means that your immune system is reacting. You're, you're producing the antibodies. When your body reacts in that manner, you're producing the antibodies. You're going to feel some pain. You're going to have some headache. And you should not be worried about it. Just take some paracetamol. However, if it does persist, then it could be something else. You need to go back to the clinic. You need to go back to the doctor or to the nurse who gave it to you and report that. We don't want people to be... Uh, I'm very strong because somebody said, because I said the reaction was going to happen. If it persists, persisting means if it happens beyond a week, you should begin to go back to your clinic and say, this is what I'm having. I have persistent headache. I cannot get out of the house. That is serious. But the reaction that we're talking about is one that most often, if you take your paracetamol, you should be able to go around and do a couple of things for yourself. Thank you so much, Professor. And that's Thank it you. for this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime news, guys. I had as guest Professor Henry Formudam. He is a public health expert in South Africa. Stay blessed in the company of our programs. Up next is Equinox Swah.